Let's talk about mixins in Smithy. Before we talk about mixins, let's talk about how we normally compose our APIs of smaller shapes. So we start with usually structures and unions. I think these are the most commonly seen uh, things when we build up our response or request types. They're common because they represent products and coproducts respectively. So a structure means you have a couple of things and they come together. A union means you have one of these things. So it's a choice, uh, whereas the structure is a set of requirements. If you want to reuse things, you can still achieve that with structures and unions uh, by simply putting the common things into a structure and the things that are changed between your sort of implementations into a union. For example, let's look at this user structure. So on the top level, we have a display name. This is common to all the kinds of users that we can have. And then we have user data, which is a union. So it's going to be specific to the kind of user that we're dealing with. So if it's just an unauthorized user, uh, we don't know much about them. So we only have like the AP address. Then we have uh, possibly an authorized user. So in, the, in that case, we will have a user ID of some sort. And finally, we have an admin user. This is not great, you know, perfect design, but it should give you the idea, right? So. Uh, we have this admin user, they have a user ID, and they also have a set of roles, a list of roles, um, which are represented by a string, but of course it doesn't matter for the purpose of the example. So here the common parts are basically whatever is required or whatever is in this user structure. It lives on the top level, of course, so things like, let's say we could have an avatar, so for unauthorized users, like someone who's not signed in, we could just generate an, a random avatar. The same goes for display name, right? This could be just uh, synthesized for any kind of user. But when you're authorized, you most likely have entered some kind of information and we would use that to fill this in. So let's say we have avatar URL, which could be a string. Um, it could totally work like this. And then finally we have this data, which is variable. Actually, I should have made that required. Let's make it so. Uh, we have this data, which is specific to your user. And that's, I think, that's okay. And that's really what you should aim for because it's arguably how you should compose things out of products and co-products, putting the common things into structures and the parts where you have to make a choice into some kind of union. So things specific to like an admin will live in an admin and you don't have to, like, let's say, repeat all of these things. But maybe you want that. Maybe you are not satisfied with this nesting of uh, user data or data in your user structure because on like JSON level, this would be something like display name and let's skip the avatar, we would have data. And then finally you have some kind of uh, nested union and some information in here. So this data thing, whatever you name it, it's, I, I think this may feel strange or it may feel uh, inconvenient to have this extra level of nesting. So maybe you want a structure that looks more like, um, maybe you would like a union on the top level, like unauthorized, and then you would have all these common fields um, without data, but like display name uh, and avatar. And you would have that for any kind of user. So like admin would also have, what do we have here? Uh, user ID and roles, so this would be user ID, let's say one and roles would be, let's say just empty list. Uh, so something like this. Uh, so you basically would flip the, the order, but you have basically all the data specific to your, your user in one place, in one object. So if you want that, then you have some repetition coming up, right? Uh, let's try to do this. So my user, uh, I guess we can just ignore, remove that. Instead, you, you would work with user data directly. Uh, you could rename it if you want to. Uh, and for each of these uh, cases, you would add these common fields and you can live like that. But what happens when you have a new field coming up? You want to still have it in all of these, um, these implementations. And now it's not so easy, right? which is arguably a point against doing this because with this design of structure user, you got this for free. Whatever you put in user is shared across all kinds of users. Now it's not. So what can we do instead? And 
basically that's it. That's what we're here for. This is what mixins are for. So we can define a mixin with all these uh, common fields. Let me revert this addition. A mixin, and that's basically like a, an interface in Java or a trait in Scala. As we'll see, this may very well generate as a trait in Scala. So this is my user as like data. I'm going to uncomment it actually, but you're going to have a user like, and this will be a mixin. We use a, the mixin trait to define that. And I will get rid of data. And now I can just add this mixin to all my implementations. So unauthorized with user like, and I'll do the same for these two as well. Okay, and, and that's it. That's basically it. The fields that you get, the members that you get from mixins, uh, they show up first. So when this gets kind of flattened and you generate the code or do whatever you, you want to do, the fields, let's say these two, it, it'll look like this. And this is all documented on the Smithy IO page for mixins, just in case you want to learn more. And that's the way it works. And even simple shapes like strings can use mixins as well. We can define a mixin uh, string name like and then something like uh, string name with name like. Now strings cannot have members, so what's the point of this? Uh, well, I didn't tell you about one other thing that mixins give you. Basically, you can copy the traits that are applied to a mixin to all the places where it's applied. So um, name and full name, they're both name likes, but name like doesn't have anything, any, any traits other than mixin. Uh, so we can define some kind of trait, like maybe a default value, uh, foobar. So now both of these will have that default value. Whenever you use name or full name, they will automatically default to foobar. Um, we can also use documentation with either documentation or the triple slash syntax. This is the same thing. And that also gets copied to the use sites. Now, what if, what if you are not satisfied with the defaults or the values that you get inherited from somewhere, you can actually reset them or you can set them to something else by redefining them on the target shape, on the thing that you uh, apply the mixing on. So now when you ask for documentation of name, it'll actually be uh, this ASDG instead of the foo inherited from the mixin. So you can still ha have some kind of like pick and choose. You can get the defaults, uh, like the common parts from the mixin and still customize a couple things if you, if you like to on the use site. We can also apply mixins on unions. So you can add union members. Uh, let's say you can have multiple unions with the same subset of members. So another way to reuse things in this in this design. And interestingly, you can apply mixins to things that don't use members, but use properties instead, such as services and operations. Uh, I'm not going to show it because there's a good example, a couple of good examples on the website, but you can have, let's say a service mixin with some operations, and then you can apply it in multiple places so that you'll have the same set of operations added to whatever operations your use sites have. So in this way, you can, for example, have a public and private API that use the same subset of, of operations uh, with like different uh, adjustments, maybe uh, like a different prefix of the whole service, or uh, you could have a V1 and V2 versions of your service and also kind of share uh, the operations that haven't changed between versions. So it's really up to you how you use these tools. They're really powerful. Um, but yeah, I'm just here to tell you what they are and what can, they can help you with. There's also things like if you don't want a, tr a trait to be inherited to the usages of the mixin, you can mark it as a, as a private trait. I think it's like uh, here, private traits, default. Uh, yeah, something like this. So then default doesn't actually get copied to um, name and full name. So that's, that's good to know. And we should also talk about how to customize uh, traits on the members that you get inherited from a mixin. So when we have a user like, let's say that my admin user, let's say I want to have a required avatar URL for all my admin users. So if you're an admin, you have to have an avatar. So I could actually just take this and say required and repeat this 
Uh, that works and will actually do the right thing. You'll have a required avatar URL in the output, but uh, if you change the type to something like integer, something that is not a string, it will blow up. It, it's not correct. You cannot do this. Now, if you don't want to repeat the whole definition of your member and its target type, and you want to also avoid like using a different type by accident, you can remove this part and use this fu funky syntax. So we say dollar and the name of the member. This is called an elided member. Uh, it's using elision syntax. I hope I'm saying that right. There are some more limitations, like you cannot have cycles or recursion across mixins. And, oh, actually mixins can inherit each other as well. So a user like can be ex extended by like an admin user like with user like, and then you can add some more stuff here. And then you can use this in an admin, admin user. Uh, so yeah, I think that's really powerful and really cool. So uh, actually I'm gonna keep this. So this is what mixins are. And I hope by this time you can imagine how you could use this for enums, how you could use this for maybe error responses. We can actually use mixins on operations to set some common errors uh, in case they are not common to like the whole service. Like we talked about this in, uh, I think the errors video. When you have errors on the, the service level, they get copied to all the operations. Maybe you just want that to happen in a subset of the operations, but still a large enough set of errors that you want to like put them all into a mixin. So that could be another possible use case. Now, before we go, I want to show you what the generated code looks like for this in Scala in Swift 4 s For example, let's look at uh, something like authorized user, user data. So it's just a normal case class. So normal type that was generated from Swift4S, I think we've seen that before, shouldn't be that surprising. But what could be surprising is that it extends user like. So we had this user like mixin and our authorized user data had that mixin. So the mixins actually get turned into Scala traits with the, the common fields and the appropriate uh, optionality level. So it's an optional field, it has an option, it's a required field, it, it's a, just a string. Uh, and everything that uses that mixin directly will have that Scala trait applied. So for example, in the case of an admin user, uh, we'll have, well, for some reason we don't have admin user like I am not sure why, but I think it's because, yeah, the required uh, status changed. So um, admin user like still looks like user like, so it has an optional avatar URL, but admin user data has a required avatar URL. So this is why. Uh, so, you know, the required status doesn't align, so Smith first simply doesn't generate that trade relationship. Uh, however, we can revert that change. We can basically remove this and when I generate the code again, we'll see the mixin is here as a Scala trait. And this also extends the other Scala trait, which was just user like. They look the same. Uh, you could argue that these are not necessary. You could just, you know, keep them like this would be the same, uh, but I guess it doesn't hurt. So that's what it looks like. One more thing, let's look at the union, the union user data. Is there anything interesting in here? And there isn't really, this is just a normal Scala union, a normal Smithy union in Scala code. So we have just these uh, three case classes, some helper methods, uh, all the metadata like ID hints and schema, uh, nothing out of the ordinary when, we're, when we compare this to like a normal uh, union case. However, there is something that we could do to kind of bridge this and the mixins and the trait uh, that's, you know, the Scala traits for user like. And that thing is we can use the ADT trait. Also quick FYI, if you're starting from the previous episode, uh, I have to add a Maven dependency in my Smithy build file. So um, yeah, it has to be Smith first protocol. The version, you know, it doesn't change that often, but the current one is 0.18.18. Uh, you can also change it in here. And if you're wondering why it's not being added automatically by Smithy for us update LSP config, I think it's a limitation slash bug. And by the time you're watching this, it could be resolved. So at the moment, you still have to do this. The ADT trait comes from Smithy for us meta. So its full name, it's 
Spin for Meta ADT. And when we use it, um, let's read the documentation, but yeah, it implies that we have this ADT member trait on all the members. This is a separate thing. I don't want to talk too much about this. I recommend you check the documentation on uh, the Swift Forest website. But most importantly, ADT means that we now consider this not just like a sealed trait of these three things, but these three things can only ever appear in user data. So if I try to use like an admin in my user structure, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but let's try this anyway. It will blow up. The validator doesn't like this. It's not okay. Why is that not okay? Uh, well, you'll see in a second when we look at what happens when we add this trait. So when I add this trait to my union, you'll see this change to this. So now the single parameter case classes are gone. And instead the full definition of these case classes, the full ones, the unauthorized user data, the authorized user data, and the admin user data, all of them get kind of inlined into the body of this companion object of our uh, our sealed trait representing our Smithy union. That's a mouthful. So we got this all inlined. Uh, there are still some files left over in my generated code, but if I do a clean first, you'll see some of them disappear. So the original definitions of all these case classes disappeared because they are now here. And because they are now here, they also have their mixins, their, their Scala trait representing the mixin. Uh, however, not all of them have the same. So like unauthorized is fine, it, it has that. Uh, authorized also, also does. But in admin user data, we have admin user like. Now this may be a bug in Swift for us, but at the moment, this, like Swift for us doesn't consider this to be a subtype of Smith, of user like, even though it literally is. So it doesn't kind of tell the whole trait, sealed trait about it. Uh, but if we inherit user like directly instead of this, then oops, you'll see that change. And now that trait is here in the, okay, in the sealed trait, we extend user like. So whenever you see a user data, which is a sealed trait, of three subtypes, you will have access to all the methods of user like. Uh, so, uh, so let's say we have a handle, user data. So we can say you uh, avatar URL, for example. And we have access to both of these. We have display name. So that's, I think that's pretty cool. So there are a bunch of prerequisites for this to, to happen. Um, so at the moment, like remember this can still change and the Spring for us project still evolves and it, it may very well support this like intermediate trait in the future. Uh, but now basically you need to be using ADT and all your targets of your union need to have this trait, sorry, this mixin directly applied on them with no changes to the required status. If that happens, then your generated user data, your master union, let's say, will have that trait representing the mixin as well. So I hope this explains this a little bit. And yeah, this is this is all I wanted to show you. So um, whenever you actually want to favor inheritance over composition, this is what you would use. You would use mixins instead of like composing things into structures and unions. Uh, I would still say that you should aim to start with structures and unions and use them as long as possible. But whenever you are forced to by like an, a contract that you're uh, asked to fulfill by a consumer of your API or some upstream that you are sending data to, uh, then this is a tool that you have at your disposal. Uh, use it wisely, but yeah, it's, it's there and this is how you use it, this is why you use it. We've seen some caveats, looked at some limitations, and yeah, this is it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.